lineup for the Blue Jays here in game three. How about the top three in this order? This is fun. Bichette, Biggio, Guerrero. And last night's guy in the ninth inning, Telez, hit the game tying home run against Jansen. Grichik out of the five spot. Billy McKinney, the long Blue Jay with multiple hits in last night's game. Danny Jansen does the catching, and Derek Fisher starts in left and bats eighth. Got to Maeda's last time out, gave up three runs over four and two thirds. It was a weird out in that he had his second most strikeouts of the year. He had nine, including seven in a row at one point, but he also walked a season high four. He can be hot and cold throughout the season, and he can be hot and cold within one outing. And for him to be hot tonight, it's going to be about attacking and getting a first pitch strike. And then after that, hoping and knowing that the Toronto Blue Jays are a very young and aggressive swinging team, and then Kenta's strength is getting people to chase. And that can be with the changeup, and that also can be with the slider. Trying to pitch the Dodgers to the sweep there, 84 and 44. 20 games up in the division. Largest lead in franchise history, by the way, is 21, which they had multiple days throughout the month of August in that 2017 season. They a Blue Jays team that has dropped four straight after their best few weeks of the season. And we are all set for game three. Bichette stands in. Maeda comes home, and off we go with strike one as he went after a fastball. Closed captioning brought to you by Howard's Appliances, your appliance specialists. 74 degrees, getting a little bit darker around first pitch, getting a little bit closer to prime time in October. One ball, one strike on Bichette. A lot of mentioning that the Dodgers can do different things as far as resting people in workload. Well, when you're going to extend the season, what the Dodgers are doing right now is they're removing the dog days, days of August. They're taking guys in through the heat and as the season starts to get extended where guys are looking to get their legs back and feeling good. They are able with all the equity they have in the win column to just remove the dog days of August with rest. A one two and a strikeout to open Maeda's night getting the chef to chase back to back sliders. One risky pitch, the very first one, a 93 mile an hour fastball near the middle of the plate, and then it was all about the corners. A lot of effort into that two strike slider. One out for Biggio. Made his first start of the series last night, won one for four. Son of the Hall of Famer watches a first pitch curve for strike one. Now these three guys at the top, Bichette, Biggio, and Guerrero, have come up to the system just how you would want, successful at each step of the way, and the three of them very close friends. And in the hands, pop to Seeger. Two up and two down. Dodger defense brought to you by Keck Medicine of USC. Peterson, Pollock, and Bellinger on the left side of the infield. Turner and Seeger. Hernandez is second. Muncie at first. And Martin catching against his old team. Yeah, so you've got Bichette who led it off. He's the fiery one. Then Biggio. They say the discipline and mature one. And then this is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. who is the fun one of the three. And the most highly regarded coming up. First pitch curve again and it's 0-1. You know you usually you have to develop a common bond but when you come from three big league families and all of a sudden you're on the same roster turning pro and come up together very easily I'm sure that they can relate to each other their upbringing the pressure of wearing a name on the back. So I'm sure they became fast friends no matter what their personalities were. I had trying to carve right through them here in the first inning. Guerrero lays off this slider and it's one and two. Vlad the youngest of the bunch still just 20. Born in Montreal while his dad was playing for the Expos and then grew up in the Dominican Republic. Signed when he was 16. And debuting just a few years later. The much fanfare. He wraps a line drive into center field for a two out hit. 
As we've seen throughout the series, it just makes a different sound coming off his bat. You literally want to keep him in the ballpark. In batting practice, he did hit it out of Dodger Stadium. He reached the roof of the pavilion. And boy, there was a lot of oohs and ahs around the ballpark. Sounds like a shotgun going off when he barrels one up. Here's Telez. His home run against Jansen forced extra innings last night. The Blue Jays in this series have four runs on four solo home runs. They're on a four game losing streak and have only scored seven runs over that period so it is tough especially with their pitching staff they usually need a little help. Uh, catches the bottom of the zone it's one and one. Another disappointing night for Kenley Jansen who felt really good about the work that he was putting in in non save situations only to see Telez and in his sixth blown save of the year. Kenta looking to be himself and hoping that the young lineup of the Blue Jays is themselves which is very aggressive and swinging and trying to get him to chase here early. a guy here who was sent to Triple A for a few weeks to work on some things, try and get him to chase less, be a little more disciplined, improve on high fastballs. They sent him with a checklist of things, and he's come back and done pretty well. Cues this one along third. It will go foul, and it's two and two. Twenty fifth start of the year for Kent Maeda. His very unique contract which is very incentive based. There's another couple that will kick in tonight. And to his credit he's reached a lot of those bonuses because one thing he's done in his four years in the majors is show up every fifth day. And for the most part avoid the I.L. He gets him swinging with a high fastball and pitches his goal as first with bookend strikeouts. Roberts tonight then Muncie will hit second and play first base for the first time since late July. Turner's at third hitting third Bellinger Seeger and Hernandez with Peterson and left and Russell Martin doing the catching. Against Jacob Waggis back who makes his seventh major league start. He has a fastball and a cutter predominantly almost 70 percent of the time you're going to get something firm from about 88 to about 93 miles an hour. So the challenge with that percentage of pitches is going to be get it on the barrel because the speed is going to be pretty consistent to keep it in fair territory. They also say that a lot of hitters walk away from home plate shaking their head like I should have been able to hit that pitch and it kind of disappears on them. Maybe he's got a high spin rate and makes that kind of an optical illusion. He's also 6'6", six, six, so you figure he gets great extension. Not sure exactly what's going on here, but the umpiring crew Specifically, the crew chief Greg Gibson just addressed both um, or both managers. Didn't seem like either guy was too fired up about the conversation. All right. So Pollock stands in, number one in the National League in this month of August, hitting 412. First pitch from Wagisback. is high ball one. Right away a matchup that shows you can come from many different backgrounds. You get a first rounder at the plate in Pollock. You've got an undrafted pitcher in Wagisback. One ball one strike. Played his college ball Ole Miss. Undrafted so signed a minor league deal with Philadelphia. And spent three years in their system before the Toronto Blue Jays acquired him in a trade last year. And here in his fourth pro season he's gone from undrafted to a big leaguer and one that's having some success as you pointed out. His one one lifted right center routine for McKinney.
So one away here in the first inning, and Max Muncy, who we talked about off of the top, winning last night's game with a walk-off home run and tying a Dodger record by hitting a homer in five games in a row. He's on a roll right now, and there's not a fastball that he can't get to, and he will not bite on the breaking ball, so you have to be very, very good throughout the whole at bat to keep him under control. It was a no-doubt shot, and he admired it like maybe no other home run that he's hit and he's hit a bunch of them 68 in his two seasons in the Dodger uniform. His first five home runs came when he was in Oakland day. One ball one strike. for bat flip. Max does not lack confidence. Two balls, one strike. It's not an irritating confidence either. It's a very subtle. There's a self-respect about his talent and there's a respect for the opponent, but He's going to take it over the edge if you take it over the edge. It's a self assurance. Yeah. Right? It's on the corner and it's two and two. And he is unafraid. It's, it's admirable. This is the kind of guy you want on your team. You know, put him in the foxhole with you and you're fine. He's got, he's got your back. We said earlier, Bob Guerin has said that he is his new Chase Utley. Mm. That is very high praise. The way he plays the game and carries himself here on a 2 2 pitch. He strikes out in a fastball two away. Blue Jays defense brought to you by Keck Medicine of USC. Fisher, Grichik, and McKinney, the outfield. At third, it's Guerrero. At short, it's Bichette. And at second, it's Biggio with Torres, the first baseman, and Jansen, the rookie catcher. Turner, a couple walks in last night's game. Over his last 15, he's hitting 385. Like going to your favorite restaurant. What's the special tonight? Oh, we've got Max Muncy with five <laughs> home runs in a row. We've got Justin Turner. He's on a hot streak also. You might like him. Oh, yeah, and the guy on deck, he's battling for the MVP, Cody Bellinger. What would you like to order tonight, sir? Actually, our chef has just let us know we're out of Bellinger. It's been a hot ticket. <laughs> the 1 0. On the hands. Back goes Bichette. And a one, two, three first. Off and rolling at Dodger Stadium. No score through one. Getting ahead. Three of four pitches. First pitch strikes. And I think if he continues to do that, he's going to get a lot of swings and misses. Randall Grichik, the five hitter to lead it off for the Blue Jays in the second. One for eight in this series so far. 28 year old in his sixth big league season goes after the first pitch grounds it up the middle Hernandez is able to get there but can't pull the trigger and an infield single to open the second inning for Randall Grichik. Kike Hernandez bobblehead night he tried to thrill us ranging far to his left and then with the dive really hard to come up with that ball and the throw. The boy showing a lot of ability just in the attempt. Lead off man on and here's Billy McKinney. Only Blue Jay in last night's game with multiple hits. Told you a little bit about McKinney last night but a former first round draft pick of the Oakland A's and a key piece in the Jeff Samarja trade to the Cubs. And then a key piece in the Aroldis Chapman trade to the Yankees. Only to be traded again the next year for Jay Happ. That was last summer. That's cut on and miss. Nice change. And it's 0 2.
And you can throw it in the strike zone with movement. You're in really good shape, and especially for Kenta, because they start laying off the stuff for the chase. You still got to be able to get back in the strike zone. And I think sometimes in his roughest innings, roughest outings, is that's what he relies on, that just I've got a good breaking ball, I've got a good changeup, but it ends up a ball, and the, the lineups lay off. In the games where he does really well, he can show that he can throw all three pitches, the fastball, the slider, and the changeup for strikes, and then he pitches a lot better. Cross to the gap in right center field, base hit. Bellinger cuts it off and keeps Gritchick from advancing any further. Hard line drive hit from McKinney. Two on, nobody out here in the second. Tries to get in on him and up on him, and it's not really up and not really in, so he's able to get the barrel on it and line it out there. Well, we've talked about Amaita's fastball and its usage really every time he starts. It's part of the topic. Throws it less than any pitcher in the National League. Throws it at the lowest rate of his career. But it's a fine line, right? I mean, it's it gives up more damage than any other pitch. But for those other two pitches to be what they are when he's right, he's got to use it enough. Yeah, they have to respect the fastball. Tonight, all three hits for the Blue Jays have come against it. Here's a swinging bunt right side that will advance the runners. Second and third with one gone as Jansen is retired. Watch every out of market regular season game live or on demand with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to stream live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Important hitter here for Maeda. Out of the eighth spot with one gone, runners at second and third. If he can get Fisher, good chance he can get out of this with no damage. You say why doesn't he just intentionally walk them and then get the next two guys out. Well I would not do that when it's Bo Bichette in the leadoff hole. Yeah let's go Fisher and Waggis back as opposed to Waggis back and Bichette. One and oh. Two and oh. Fisher hitting 171. Bo Bichette coming into the game 333. So you're messing with that much average when you pitch around Fisher. You bring him into the equation even with two outs and bases loaded. I don't think you want that situation. I think you take second and third here, one out. Go after him. Second and third one gone. No score in the second. Here's Maid is 2 0, and that fades to the outside corner. Strike one. First two innings consistently have been the bugaboos for Kenta Maeda. ERA above five in the first two innings. There's a second inning against Atlanta where he really struggled in his last start. On a 2 1, Fisher pulls one into the shift. Hernandez has it and goes to first. But the Blue Jays take the lead on an RBI ground out from Derek Fisher. Kike Hernandez putting on a show it's already at second base. Right that was an outstanding play. Charging that and rounding it off and get it into first in a heartbeat. This is not an easy play. When he has to charge this ball and come around it and continue the charge and then the wrong foot throw. Outstanding. Fun to watch him play defense wherever he is. So it is Waggis back here with two gone in his first career major league plate appearance. Strike one.
give up one run in the ninth inning, you've got a blown save. You give up one run as a starter in the second inning, and you've got a lot of game left. Completely different scenarios. The guys in the bullpen, they walk a tight rope. And when they fail a little bit, everybody wants to give up on them, but you can't. And guys in the rotation, you've got time to battle. You've got time to figure it out. You wait for this great offense. So that one run is nothing to Kenta. Here comes the 2 2. And it's fouled off. Another 2 2 to the opposing pitcher. And he got him looking to finish the second. Blue Jays settle for one. To the bottom of the second, we go in a one-nothing game. SoCalBMW.com for more details. And by Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Good times. Blue Jays get the game's first run. We go to the bottom of the second. And Cody Bellinger comes up. We talk about great hitters and fun guys to watch on the opposing team when we say it's must watch TV. Well, we got a few of those on our own team, especially this guy. Leading baseball with his 42 home runs. He is second in the National League, only to Freddie Freeman in RBIs with 100. In the terms of the Triple Crown race, the average still within striking distance. He is seventh, hitting 317. On the first pitch of the second, he takes ball one. If he hits 50 home runs in 2019, he will be tied for the most home runs over the first three seasons of a guy's career in Major League history. That's high, and it's 2-0. Oh. He's got 106 so far. If he reaches 50, he'd be tied with Albert Pujols and Ralph Kiner with 114 through his first three big league years. On a 2 0. Swings through it 2 and 1. Some pretty special company. And quite a turnaround to do the 50. Let's say he gets there in the third season. With all the things that he has gone through and adjusted he didn't come here with the swing that we are watching. He came here with the ability but he put a lot of work in. Hitters count leading off the second. And pulling one to second. It's caught by Biggio. One gone as Seeger comes up, and he is in our Land Rover Performance Spotlight tonight. Another double for him in last night's game, and this is a really good stretch he's going through. A bunch of extra base hits in there. Pulling the ball firmly and often, but not pulling it so much that he's not on the off speed pitches able to really still time up almost anything right now in this hot streak. Double last night was his 35th this year even missing a month those 35 doubles are second in the National League trailing just Josh Bell of the Pirates by two. Two and up. Two and one. Well, we we're talking about Waggis back and you know, not overwhelming stuff in terms of velocity. How does he get it done? How does the ball tend to just appear on hitters? He actually has one of the lowest spin rates in baseball. 
So it is doing something different than everybody else. I guess that's a good point. Yeah. They're expecting it to do something and it's staying a little straighter or it's really falling a little bit more. Right. That would be it. Yeah. Falling more with less spin. High spin rate if it's efficient spin gives it the illusion that it is rising. Really it's just not dropping compared to the average fastball. On a 3 1 Seeger gets his hands in and yanks it foul. You just knew if hitters were swinging at pitches and thought they should get them but go back shaking their head that it was not in the norm as far as the spin rate. Mm -hmm. Optical illusion yes a little bit with the delivery because he hides the ball very well behind the six foot six body. Hooks the ball coming out of his glove out the back like a Rick Sutcliffe that Dodger fans would remember. And you said he was a late bloomer undrafted and I think about a guy with a six foot six frame waiting for the muscles and the coordination to catch up to his size the bones. So a lot of the late bloomers can be guys that not it's not about ability it's about just gaining the coordination and the strength with all the size to harness it and to throw the ball accurately. Here comes his payoff to Corey Seager and we'll do it again on that on that super slow mo replay. You know that he's six six and so he's going to get good extension because of that. But you can see on that super slow mo replay he really works to get down the hill and add extra extension maximize that six six frame. Look at this extension. <laughs> With sound effects on you. <laughs> Down the left field line on a breaking ball. Fisher will run out of room and it stays at three and two. I was the pitching coach for the Texas Rangers and ended up working with somebody who's six foot eleven, you know, six foot ten, Chris Young. And Chris Young now works in the Major League Baseball offices in New York and had a very nice career. Pitched a lot with San Diego, but that extension makes the ball like an optical illusion because they're throwing it from a place closer to the hitter and so it's not about the radar gun it's about the relative velocity to the hitters eyes. Seager pops it up on the left side it's Guerrero. Drifting out there to put it away five up and five down for Waggis Peck. <laughs> It's a new walk up song for Kike. Is it? Added a little reggaeton track. Yeah. Dembo and reggaeton. Wow. Did you run into DJ Severe tonight? I, do you think I would have a cheat sheet? <laughs> you got a cheat sheet, don't you? I, I just knew. <laughs> I didn't know, but I figured when I heard the first tones of that song, you didn't know off the top of your head that that was. I'm really good song. at name that tune. Yeah. When the DJ is handing you the names of the tunes. Well done though. I'm trying to catch up. Dodgers looking for their first base runner of the game as Hernandez looks at strike one. One for six in his first two games back from that hand injury. I had to get a, TJ, a, a DJ severe cheat sheet because we give Dieter so much prime time and I'm like DJ I'm, I'm sorry man I just don't know the songs you're playing. I see, they're not on my playlist I don't think and Joe is more locked into you than than me you know so you got to help me out man. You got to help me out. He did. He did. Good guy. He had a little little glimmer in his eye when I asked for the cheat sheet. He's like, OK, yeah, we can get Joe on this one. He's saying, now we're talking enough of that Dieter guy. <laughs> <laughs> Couple gems right there. Yeah. The stadium lucky to have. Make the entertainment factor here at the stadium at a very high level. One of the best, if not the best place in the world to come watch a game and be entertained. Look out. And it actually got him. And Hernandez, the first Dodger base runner of the night, as Vegas back hits him with an 0-2. On his bobblehead night, having to get out of the way. Not the head, but he got his forearm on the left side. Second inning kept alive for Jack Peterson. 
25th home run in game one of this series. That 16 run outburst on Tuesday night with the Dodgers hit five homers. So they won a game that way and then they won a game on the other end of the spectrum last night 2-1. I mean, one nothing here in game three as Peterson takes ball one. In the air to center field, but off the end of the bat, and Grichik is under it. That's that for the Dodgers in the second. Beautiful night. At a beautiful spot. This time of night, most nights, breathtaking here. Top of the order, Bo Bichette swings at the first pitch, 0-1-1. Baseball rat, probably not surprising after watching him play for a couple days that this is a guy that just loves the game and always has. Of course, growing up around it with his dad Dante. Yanks this one to left center field. Jack Peterson sprinting to cut it off and catch it for the first out of the third. You might not catch this in the first week of his career, but now with the reputation of Bichette, outfielders playing a little deeper, and as soon as he swings and makes contact, they are probably off backwards. Get back. This guy's hitting it hard. Nice catch by Jock. And so Bichette the first out of the third and here's Biggio. That's strike one. You know Dante as long of a career as he had. He retired when Bo was three so Bo doesn't remember much from dad's playing career. But Dante was a hitting coach for a season in Colorado, and that was the year where Bo really got to feel what the big leagues are like, and where it really became his dream to be one himself. That was when he was 15, and he spent the entire summer in Denver with his dad, going to Coors Field each day, getting that real big league education. There's one particular day for him that he says stands out. Where the last batting practice group for the Rockies needed another hitter to have a, a round number, and so they let Bo be that guy. And he hit a couple onto the concourse at Coors Field. Vigio lays off, and it's two and two. The Dodgers were actually the opponent that night, and they were getting ready to hit themselves, so they were doing the stretching off to the side. And Bo says he remembers seeing the looks on these big leaguers faces the Dodgers faces pregame like who in the world is this kid. And it meant a lot to him. That's a good 25 rows 30 rows up oh, there crushed. Yeah. Horse field or not. Oh okay. count. Horse field or not is right. <laughs> so that raw ability combined with his love for the game. Special young player. Biggio, perhaps guessing something else, takes a slider in there for strike three, two out. That definitely gets locked up. And you know what? That's a result of Kent to show him that he's not afraid to throw his fastball in the strike zone. Really hard to confuse hitters when you're not throwing multiple multiple pitches for strikes. Guerrero Jr. singled his first time and takes a fastball up and in here ball one. Dropped out of school in the Dominican to focus on baseball and he was a preteen 
Trained all day, six days a week. He gets Sundays off. And on his off day, he'd go play softball on the same team with his dad. How cool is that? Maybe some days, though, we're working with Uncle Wilton. He'd take a thousand swings in a day. Was playing with 16 year olds when he was 10. That's ability and I'm sure an early growth spurt where he was big enough to handle that. One of the benefits of being at his dad's academy in the Dominican which is a, a hotbed for young players there is that there is access to a full time chef. And they have these famous weight gainer shakes there that the chef is known for. Protein powder, okay, right, yeah. normal, fine. Some fruit in there, no big deal. Ice cream, that's starting to tilt it a little bit towards the, the weight gainer side of it. Right. Rice and spaghetti. Wow. Also in this weight gainer shake that all these young prospects take there. He's down swinging here. Maeda gets him with a slider, and against the top of the order goes one, two, three in the beginning tomorrow night. Highly anticipated series that is finally here. Russell Martin to lead off the third for the Dodgers. Maeda and Pollock to follow. Against Jacob Waggis back. He's at the top of the zone with his first pitch, strike one. Made his big league debut in late May of this year. Pitched in one game and then went on the injured list for a month with a shoulder problem. Came back in early July, struggled a little bit out of the gate after returning. But as you mentioned off of the top, last four games has got an ERA around two and a half. And the Blue Jays have won each of his last four starts. Well, he got three of the decisions, so he's three and zero oh in his last four. So he's on a roll, and this is a legitimate starter that the Dodgers are finally facing against the Blue Jays. We've seen the opener of the first two games. The pride of Prairieville, Louisiana. Small town outside of Baton Rouge. Down there, not too far from True Detective Country. Oh, yeah. Season one. Yes, you have to remember which season. Yeah. Anything but season two. I catch up on a lot of those in the off season. Yeah. Big time binge watcher in the winter. Two two to Martin. Cracks his bat on a flare to Biggio. Hello Kitty Night returns to Dodger Stadium on Tuesday September 3rd purchase this ticket pack and receive a Hello Kitty Dodgers blanket tickets available at Dodgers.com slash Hello Kitty. Hello Oral. <laughs> and here's Maida. One of the best hitting pitchers in the league this year. 250. He homered in his first game as a big leaguer. Had I given you some odds then, set the over under to half a home run, how many will he have? Take the over or under on this date? Four years into the career? Yeah. You would probably say something like five. Oh, wow. So you would have gone Four. way over. Yeah, I, I, for sure. When you got one in your first big league game, you've proven you've got the ability, and it wasn't lucky. He was hitting home runs in spring training. Dave Roberts was making him switch bats, thinking he had a loaded one. Yeah, he was on pace for hundreds. <laughs> His next start will come in San Diego where he hit that first career homer. Received the silent treatment when he got back to the dugout. On this one too. He pulls the first hit of the night for the Dodgers into left.
No less on a breaking ball, too. Jordan Lombard gave him a little hard time on barrels are overrated, but he got most of the barrel, and that's a lot of barrel for a pitcher. Yeah. Got the ball in the air, got the launch angle correct. <laughs> and so tying run aboard with one gone here in the third inning, and A.J. Pollock coming up. The problem for the Dodgers in last night's game wasn't getting guys on. It was doing something once they did. They went one for 14 with men on base. Able to win it with the two home runs. And really good pitching outside of the blemish from Jansen in the ninth. It was a special night for Walker Bueller. Special night for Max Muncy with his fifth game in a row that he's had a home run. The walk off was a big one. We said last night, you don't get paid for overtime, and he made sure we didn't go that far. On a 2 0, Pollock. Turns away on a fastball inside. Count goes to three balls, no strikes. Maeda with the only hit, and it was on a breaking ball. Everything else, the fastball in the cutter, the Dodgers have gone over against, and that's what you're mainly going to see with Wagus Pack. His slider gets hit at a very high rate, so they're trying to back away from that pitch. A four pitch walk first and second with one gone. The I pace. This is how Jaguar delivers electric performance. For 13, Max Muncy. Now we get to see Max Muncy every day, and we know his story by now, but I think it's always good to remind ourselves how amazing it is the path that he's taken, where he was just a couple years ago. Of course, released in the spring of 2017 by the Oakland A's. That's a little more than two years ago. So he goes home and reworks his stance, reworks his setup with his father, Lee, in the batting cages at Keller High School in Texas. They had to wait their turn. They had to wait for the actual high school team to use the cages. And here's Max Muncy and Lee Muncy standing off to the side waiting for the team to get done. They can get in and get their work done. A couple hundred swings a day. Tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until he found something that felt right. Takes a strike over the inside corner. What he came out with was less upright, more crouch, trying to leverage what has always been a really strong lower half. He just had never really engaged it in his swing. Tweaked his hand and his foot positioning. Added a small leg kick. The biggest change wasn't a mechanical one, it was a mindset change. He started swinging more aggressively. Told himself, I can't be afraid to strike out anymore. That's low and it's one and one. For as long as Muncie had played, he'd been known for two things quick hands and advanced strike zone awareness. And the adjustments that he made in that Keller High School cage with his dad allowed him to utilize those quick hands better and add some pop to the great eye, the great strike zone awareness. Become the big league all-star that he is now. On a 1-1 pitch, he hits it foul, and it's 1-2. and two. Last night's home run swing, the walk-off, he coils, he gets in there, and you see the power. And that's a big swing for him. With that full coil there and knowing your next innings, you get one over the wall, the game's over. I think he actually was swinging for that one. Locked that new swing in and a great triple A season in 2017. Got his big league chance again in 2018 and hasn't looked back. Strikes out here on an elevated fastball as Waggis back turns it up to 94 for out number two. Number 10, Justin Turner. Change speeds up as well as down. So you got the cut fastball that's going to have approximately the same rotation as this four seamer. 
But the four seamer, you stay behind a little bit more and you get a little more velocity. Up to Turner with two on and two out here in a one nothing game in the third. Oh and one. Other than two. Always been one of the best hitters in clutch situations on the Dodgers and across the National League. Two on, two out, 0 2 pitch in the dirt. Justin hasn't really bid on anything, even a couple of pitches that looked like he would have liked to offer Don. And that's when you shake your head as a pitcher when you say, I just threw in an area the last first two pitches where he didn't offer. What's he looking for? Mm. And I think he was early in the count looking for something on the inner half inside. But he got two balls away and took them. Maida in second, Pollock at first, one, two, leaves a fastball up and the count evens up. This is where you have to change your thinking if you're Justin Turner. You've got to know this guy has had a lot of success with his fastball and his cutter. These counts, you start thinking curveball slider, you're going to try and make me chase, but is that really what this guy's going to do? His track record says he's going to stay firm. Deuce is wild two on two out two two Turner fouls it back and we'll do it again. Another 2 2 and another foul ball. They haven't really gotten the ball in on him. They've tried twice. One was too high, and that one right there was an attempt to come in, but was really just inner half. Got another pitch to play with on the edges. Send the target in seventh pitch fouled again. You see guys come into games that do really well first time around the order second time around the order third time around the order the league catches up to him. This Dodger lineup is so good a lot of times they catch up to people the second time around the order they don't need that extra layer of information. To catch up to somebody and that's what it kind of looks like right here with Justin. It's the eighth pitch of the battle and it's fouled again. You know a Max Muncy grinds out at a bat a Cody Bellinger does it Justin Turner does it these guys as they do that they're giving themselves information but they're also given the whole lineup information. And they can get the starters a lot quicker because of the way they grind out the at bats and they don't chase. That's so two and two thirds out of the innings for Waggis back, but he's at 55 pitches already. That's a pace to struggle to get through five. Yep. And again, where do you get if you get the starter out early? You get to a bullpen that you start to deplete where they have to draw on. Names that they might not want to in a winning situation. 
Ninth pitch. Ball three. And so now they'll get a head start. Can't tell you what a mental grind it is to pitch against this Dodger team and other great teams that are like it. There they go. Here it comes. Turner lines it by the center field, but it hangs up for Gritchick. Through a three, the Blue Jays remain in front. That time to revisit something that happened on this date in 1917 in Brooklyn. How about the Robins and the Pirates playing a 22 inning game? Robins won at 6 5. It was the longest game in franchise history, would be for another few years until they played a 26 inning game. But in this 22 inning game, they had 28 hits, they included five from a guy named High Myers. Henry Harrison Myers was his real name. Very speedy center fielder. He was speedy even though he ran, they said, with his elbows locked. Looking like a guy at the train station running trying to catch his train with heavy suitcases in both hands. So if you can picture that, I don't know how you can still be fast. Behind Myers was savvy, creative player. Used his speed in the bases. Hit an inside the park home run in the World Series off Babe Ruth one time. And as a center fielder, he once snuck in from center to help pick off a runner at second, which is not completely unheard of over the course of history. But how about this one? There were three runners on at one point, and the ball was being thrown all over. You know those plays. Sometimes they look like Little League plays. But the madness on this particular play ends with the center fielder, High Myers, tagging a runner out at home plate. Oh, wow. <laughs> at home. High Myers, one of the great Dodgers of the early days in Brooklyn. One nothing scores. This game goes to the fourth. And Kentamaida goes back to the mound to face the heart of the lineup. High Myers family appreciates the fact that Kenta was on the bases and took his time <laughs> having a cup of water and toweling off and coming back out to pitch. He got to relive his days with the Dodgers. What have you thought of Kenta so far? Really good slider and the fastball is what the Blue Jays have hit. So, but what I really like about it is I think the success of the slider is because he's using the fastball. Now it hasn't been as effective because they're three for six off of it. But you know what? He's got to use it to set up the other two pitches. Five K's and importantly no walks so far. After he issued a season high four of them in Atlanta. Rowdy Telez to lead off this fourth. And yes it is Telez. Seen a bunch on social media. No, no, it's Tellez. If Rowdy tells me it's Tellez, I'm going with this man. For sure. Yeah. His name's Rowdy, for heck's sake. You can't <laughs> dispute him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's behind 0 2. Real name Ryan John Tales. Scrapes that off speed pitch off of the dirt. Muncie at first feeds Maeda for the first out of the fourth. Flawless Max Muncie over there. Known now for the bat and the home run swing and the walk off last night, but really smooth there at first base. He's gone from a guy to where are we going to play him because of the bat to we can almost play him anywhere and we feel really good about what he's going to do. The improvements he's made defensively. He has given everybody around him the confidence that he is a defender and he's going to contribute in a big way. Make an instructional video out of that play. Gritchick scored the lone run of the game after his base hit to lead off the second. Takes ball one for Maeda. Drafted by the Angels, traded to the Cardinals for David Freeze. 
and then traded to the Blue Jays prior to last season. They like what they saw from him last year, even though that included a really poor start and a DL stint for a knee injury, but he overhauled his swing and his stance while he was rehabbing and was a different guy after. And they liked it enough where they signed him to a long extension this spring. Five years, 52 million. Take him through his mid 30s, or at least into his mid 30s. On a two on from Maeda, Grichik pops it foul, two and two. You get an extension like that you because you've improved and people trust you. But you get an extension like that with a young team that's trying to develop a character and a personality because you're a good guy mm -hmm. and you're the right guy to have in that clubhouse. That's what the brass said they said they're betting on the professionalism betting on his commitment to being great and the example that will come from that. Fly ball off the end of the bat that he hooks into left. Peterson on to catch it. Two up, two down in the fourth. Used a few different pitches there, but got the out with the slider. 0 for 7 against that pitch now. Here's Billy McKinney. Singled his first time, three for six in this series. With the change up right there and a 1 0 hitters count. It's a pretty solid pitch tonight. It really hasn't gotten him to chase it, but he's gotten it for a strike. There's a strike, two and one, with a bit of a chase. Just a bit, but that was a strike for a long time. What mm -hmm. ended up maybe a ball off the corner. See the glove starts at the glove ends up just off the edge. Same pitch different location same result two and two. Volkswagen slow mo cam this will be really slow a change up in slow motion. Looks easy to hit how can he miss that. Uh, with Good arm speed and. Anticipating a possible fastball that makes that pitch outstanding. And now a 2 2. He throws it a third consecutive time, getting a swing and a miss on all three, and Kent has retired nine straight. Motion with enthusiasm for the skip. Bellinger leads off this fourth inning with the Dodgers trailing one nothing and lifts a fly ball the other way that sends him back to the wall with room to catch it would miss it by much but Fisher puts it away and Bellinger is the first out of the fourth. Five. Seager. And here's Seager. Only hit for the Dodgers tonight from Kenta Maeda. It came last inning. A.J. Pollock followed it with a walk, but Wagaspak was able to get Muncie and Turner to get out of the inning. Now 
Now he comes home to Seeger. Strike one. One and two. Both Vegas back and Kenta Maeda use the straight step back. You don't see that quite as much. This is the old conventional way you would wind up, like the Spalding guide to how to be a pitcher. Grounder to a shifted Bichette. When did that come out? The Spalding guide? Yeah. Wow. I'm going to guess that really early, a lot earlier than I would guess. My first guess would be early 50s, but I would say even farther back. The first Spalding baseball guy, and here's a tip off that it's really far back, way back. Baseball is two words. Okay. <laughs> 1889. Oh my gosh. Ball one on Hernandez. Get hit by an 0-2 pitch his first time. Grounded a third. There's Guerrero, and there's a one-two-three fourth for the Blue Jays. To the fifth we go. It's one nothing. Last night's hero. Kenley Fornia for Kenley Jansen. We also have Negron James for Christopher Negron. And we also have a bunch of different fun ones. We have Kike, of course, and Seeger and Kirsch and all of the names and personalities. It's a good weekend, and it should be a good contest, too, between the Yanks, guys. All right, as Danny Jansen goes after Maeda's first pitch of the fifth, that sends Bellinger to the edge of the track. And an instant replay of the ball that Bellinger produced on the first pitch of the bottom of the fourth. Other side of the field, but a long fly out. And up comes Derek Fisher brought in the lone run of the game with a ground out in the second inning. Derek Fisher traded to the Blue Jays for Aaron Sanchez from the Houston Astros at the end of July. He's seven for 42 so far with the Blue Jays Four of those seven hits are home runs. Including one against Kershaw on Tuesday night. Tony's learning an essential skill. Flicking sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have contests for distance, other times accuracy. Put a paper cup up there with a piece of gum on the bottom of it to stick it to the railing and you've got to throw it in there. Like playing basketball. Pointing away from the pitcher's mound and the hitter, so I don't think they're talking baseball. Could be talking bullpen, I guess. Remember when Clayton Kershaw had the best hair on the team? Not with those two guys next to him. <laughs> on the corner to get Fisher looking. Maeda keeps on rolling. That is 11 straight retired. Blue Jays might be ahead one to nothing on the scoreboard, but as far as pitching and getting swings and misses and strikeouts, Kenta Maeda is winning that battle. 13 swings and misses of the 29 times the Blue Jays have swung at him and Dodgers are not missing Waggis back. He's only gotten four swings and misses. Here is Waggis back to hit taking a ball. For Maeda this is pretty similar to the outing in Atlanta. He was able to limit the damage a little bit better in the second but. In Atlanta he gave up three runs in the second inning then Cade seven in a row. 
here he gave up his lone run in the second inning and has proceeded to retire 11 straight. Trying to finish this one a little more strongly than he did in Atlanta. Well, there was a double and a walk that chased him in the fifth. Three and oh on Wagaspec. Sometimes the thing that is easiest to do is hardest to do when it's the easiest situation. Wow, his first walk of the game is on four pitches to the opposing pitcher. Which means he's got to deal with Boba Shat with a man on here in the fifth. That changed the whole complexion of this inning. Two out man on first, you think, oh, no big deal, but this young man is going to swing hard. He's going to attack if you throw him a strike right away, and it's going to be dangerous. First pitch curve misses low. Bichette is 0 for 2 today. He's 3 of 11 in this series. Two of those three hits, home runs. One and one. Martin keeps it close enough for it. I guess back doesn't even think about it. Bichette looks susceptible because of his aggressiveness to the chase away and maybe even up. Where with Guerrero Jr., the other power guy that you really take a look at, it looks like they want to crowd him a little bit more. Ground ball is short for Corey Seager. Over the short way, and we are halfway home in a 1 nothing game. Pitcher's duel. And you look at the numbers coming in. A 1 nothing game to the bottom of the fifth for the Dodgers bringing the bottom of the order up. Still playing that sunflower game. Yeah. Peterson flied to center his first time. One ball, no strikes. Chop the first, and an easy play for Telez. Just Felipe Esparza live September 15th. Good times. Still just one hit for the Dodgers, belonging to Kenta Maeda as Russell Martin comes up, having popped the second his first time. Facing one of his old teams, last four seasons with the Blue Jays. was special for him the city that he was born in family moved to Montreal when he was a baby spent a couple years in Paris when he was eight and nine before moving back to Canada one ball one strike he grew up playing baseball and hockey some pick up basketball too with his dad that was a great athlete.
Russell says a big moment and I think a lot of guys talk about this was the first time that he beat dad playing pickup hoops. He's 14 or 15 years old and finally got him. Also named Russell. On a 2 1 pitch. Bounces it back to Waggis back. Two away in the fifth. I can't remember when I started to beat my dad at different things, but I do remember that it was very important. It's almost like a changing of the guard a little bit, at least in the sports realm. Not in who's paying the bills. Do you remember first time you lost to your sons at something like that? Because the other end of it, I would imagine, is a completely different set of emotions. You know, this this generation of raising my son. It didn't happen on a ping pong table or a pool table. It happened with a video game really yeah. early. <laughs> Strike one on my Ada. Yeah, that'll level the playing field. Yeah, that. So the video game was something that I stayed away from as much as I could. I wanted to spend a lot of time with him, but I'm like, no, you need to stay away from this because I was losing. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball for Bichette. And that is one hit over five shutout innings. And Wagaspec has retired eight straight. He took so long that the crew chief Greg Gibson got a little hot. He's saying let's go because not just Kenta but the entire team knowing that Kenta is going to take his time coming back out. They're saying we're not going to go stand out there. So nobody had taken the field. He's pointing up to the between innings clock saying let's go. You're out of time. Let's get out here and get the game going. I mean it is a little ridiculous. Yeah, there there are a lot of excuses that you can come up with for why you're not out there. But Kenta kind of has a pattern of being a little late and has a regiment that he goes through before he comes out to pitch. And it can even get a little long when he's not the last out or in the on deck circle. So you are just having to tolerate it. But it looks like uh, it's kind of come to a head and there might have to be an adjustment. Maybe a letter in his locker tomorrow. Yeah. If they can get it there overnight. I don't, they probably can handwrite it. Oh, they dear yeah. Kenta. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be signed from the team, not the league office. <laughs> Greg Gibson just takes some of his personal stationery from right. the line. But this crew is leaving. They won't be the crew for the Yankees. They'll write it before they take off. Before they leave, yeah. It's been over four minutes since the last out at the bottom of the fifth. Well, they're de definitely going to be a discussion with the commissioner's office, league offices. Joe, you're just not going to have any more story times when Kenta pitches. Or maybe we'll have all the story times. <laughs> Are you saying if the league office gets involved? Yeah. Uh, I think a we'll be quicker. fine with that. Two, three, and four for the Blue Jays. Lone run of this game came in the second. On a ground down from Derek Fisher scoring Randall Gritchick who had started that name with a single. Maeda drops in strike one on Kevin Biggio. 0 for 2 tonight. 1 on 1. Kenta is continuing the string of great pitching here at home by the starters. And he has pitched very well here at home. Eight and eight on the year, but six and three here at Dodger Stadium, and the ERA much lower. The batting average against much lower. They're only hitting 176 when he pitches here at home this year. His secondary stuff has been outstanding here at home, both the slider and the changeup. Consistent environment, beautiful weather. Doesn't have to deal with the Arizona thin air or the Colorado Coors Field effect. Not where he wanted it, but it's a strike and it's two and two. How about the entire starting staff at home this year has a cumulative ERA of 227. You don't have to get them a lot of runs and then just finish it off with the bullpen. 2 2 pitch. Grounded gently back to Maeda. You think about October and you think it's going to be Ryu Kershaw and Bueller on the mound as the first three starters not in that particular order. 
Now those guys here at home, Dodgers start at home, they are 23 and 0 with a 1 8 1. So you better bring your bats and you better bring your pitching if you're going to beat the Dodgers at home with those three on the mound. Wyatt has retired 13 of the last 14 as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes up. One of the three hits for the Blue Jays tonight, a single back in the first. Flashes this ball to left center field, way back there and gone. Vlad Guerrero Jr. hits his 15th Major League home run, and the Blue Jays lead it 2 0. Fifteenth home run and he's already got a home run trot and they've got a home run tradition over there as far as making it rain with the sunflower <laughs> seeds. You don't want to hit a really big home run. They throw those seeds hard. <laughs> got a breaking ball we talked about earlier. Maybe they try to crowd him a little bit more but when he extends his arms he looks a lot like his dad. Strike breaking ball does not fool him. Strike one on Telez. It's a scary thing but Vlad senior says one of the things that Vlad junior has an advantage on him on is power. Really think about that. I don't know about that. Vlad hit 449 home runs and he says Vladito has a lot more power than he did. One and two. Certainly bigger and that is a conversation the Blue Jays have had. They need him to lose weight to get him to where they want to be. And he's lighter now than he was mm -hmm. in camp. He's lost weight throughout the season. But it's something they are concerned about as far as his long term health, especially all the different joints carrying a little extra weight. His grandma, so Vlad's mom used to cook for both clubhouses 81 games a year the home team and the visiting team she'd make her homemade rice and beans and some nights chicken some nights beef and she'd feed both teams at Angel Stadium Vlad Junior lives with her in the winter in the Dominican and so he's eating good in the offseason with grandma. Stays full on to less. Isn't there just certain dishes that remind you of home and remind you of grandma or mom's cooking? Sure. You know, and, and when you're around it, it almost makes you eat until you hurt. You don't you don't stop when you're full. You just keep going because you love it. We're all guilty of that. A lot of times you end up on the couch with a stomach ache just laying there. <laughs> Changeup gets to Laz, two out. Adam Kalerik starting to warm. To right-hander coming up here in Gritchick. After him, the left-handed batting Billy McKinney. Fastball for strike one. One shy of his strikeout total from his last timeout, which was the second most he's had in a game this year. So eight Ks tonight, one walk. Or the Blue Jays, two runs on four hits, but no support. Not yet. It is set up for a walk off. I don't know if they want to wait that long. Eleventh of the season last night. Uh, seventh walk off home run. It's the fifth most by a single team in a single season ever. Record hmm. is nine walk off home runs in one year. The Indians in 95. 
I remember that team. Yeah, I thought you might have some <laughs> memories of that. Richick down on strikes. Samaida with nine Ks and back to back starts. But the home run from Guerrero makes it 2 0. Waggis back, who drops a breaking ball into A.J. Pollock. 25 year old rookie from Louisiana. Coming off a good start against Seattle, held them to two runs over five and a third. But thus far in this one, putting together his best start as a big leaguer. He's looked really, really good. You know what? He is he's almost like a one of a kind. The the height, the delivery, the spin rate being so low, the fact that he has such confidence in the fastball and the cutter and has been doing a good job executing it on both sides of the plate. He's thrown just enough sliders to show it, but really hasn't tried to pitch with it because it's not a very good pitch for him. He's thrown just enough curveballs, really hasn't landed it, but shown it. Got an out on a, or two on a changeup, but it's mainly been the fastball and the cutter. His two on to AJ Pollock. Grounded by the bag foul, and it's two and two. And as we've talked about throughout this series, this is something that the Blue Jays are sorely lacking in at this point, starting pitching. Got a lot of pieces they're excited about coming up to the system, but it's going to be a little while before some of those guys get here. Very excited about the hitters they have, the young hitters that have come up. And this season's all about developing those guys. But a nice surprise here they have in Wagaspak. Kicks and deals at 2 2. And gets Pollock swinging. I hope AJ's okay. First base, did that slip out, or did he lose the grip because of a little pain? It's a strikeout. Ooh, that was awkward at the end. A little bit of a grimace. Yeah, and he's flexing that hand. Yeah. Muncy. We talk about three true outcomes Homer, strikeout, walk. Mm -hmm. 11 plate appearances in this series for Max Muncy. Nothing but three true outcomes. Really? Two homers. Five walks, four Ks. Highest rate of the three true outcomes the game has ever seen. Not Max. Well, actually, yes, Max in the series, but just across baseball, 2019. Not necessarily a good thing. Grounded his second for Biggio. So two gone here in the sixth and a two nothing game. And here's Justin Turner. Turner. Well, the Dodgers after that 16 run outburst in the first game have hit 143. Over the last two, scoring just two runs on seven hits. It's a mixed bag in that brain right there. It's I feel good about the way I pitched. I wish I would have got a little support. Hope the guys come back. It's hard to pat yourself on the back about the pitching performance, but Kenta should do that. Because you still feel down inside because the team's down two nothing.
He got him swinging and he's retired 12 in a row. Fast acting pain relief pitching change brought to you by BioFreeze. It is Caleb Ferguson who looked good his first time out in this series on Tuesday night. Uh, Caleb trying to really bring along not only the high fastball, which he's kind of known for with that swing and miss, but get the breaking ball. And he's made some nice adjustments with his grip, with the feel of it, and he's starting to land it more. And even when he doesn't, it's really got a shape and a pattern that the hitter has to respect. Teoscar Hernandez will pinch hit. With the left hander now on the mound, he's pinch hitting for Billy McKinney out of the sixth spot. And taking strike one. Every pitcher that comes out of the bullpen from now until the end of the regular season will feel like they are what would be known as a little bit of a tryout for the postseason roster. And Caleb could make strides with his stuff and consistency and definitely be an asset in October. Two and two. Two out of three curveballs. The first one had a little bit of a flat break to it, found the zone, and that one he made go a little bit more down. It's on top of this. The spin really had good bite at the end. It's a very positive sign from him. Let's 2 2 fly. Goes with a fastball to freeze him. 95 to the corner. One away in the seventh. Be at Dodger Stadium on Labor Day, September 2nd, when the Dodgers open a three-game series with the Rockies. Get your tickets today at Dodgers.com slash tickets. So that's 10 Ks for Blue Jays hitters tonight. Danny Jansen, 0 for 2. Jansen is the only hitter in the lineup yet to strike out. Two. Arco quality top tier gas for less. This has been a very impressive seven pitches. I am really encouraged by looking at this stuff and the way he's locating the fastball to both sides of the plate and landing the breaking ball. And then making it into a chase with two strikes. That one he missed across the plate. Trying to come in with an 0 2 pitch. That's too big a miss. Seven pitches prior were really good. Still playing the baseball probabilities. Make your pitch as often as you can, and you've got the equation in your favor. Barely gets a piece of 94 there and it stays at 0 and 2. I'm always amazed and admire the guys that can come out of the bullpen with the phone ringing, quick warm up, know you're going in, the adrenaline's rushing, the bullpen gate opens, you go out, and then you can still hit your target. And all of that being amped up makes you want to just throw. Gets in on him, flex to left. Here comes Peterson to take a hit away. 
Applauded by Caleb Ferguson, who's retired the first two of the seven. That's a planned awkwardness at the end of that because it's either a dive or stay on your feet and run through it. So you're making that decision the whole way, and Jock is between the two. So just gives himself low enough that he can glove it. But then it looks like he's awkward and maybe jamming a knee did a nice job impacting the ground and rolling through it. Caleb Ferguson appreciates the effort. Two up, two down, and here's Derek Fisher. Only a handful of base runners both sides. Four hits for the Blue Jays, one walk. So five total base runners. The Dodgers one hit, one walk, one hit batsman. Ledgers three men on base over the first six. Here comes Ferguson with a 1 0 offering. And it's strike one. Not hard to tell that this guy's competitive. The red hair, the red face, the sweat. The glare. You want your athletes to wear their emotions on the sleeve. You got it on the mound. Ball three. His last outing, he pulled a trigger on a 3 2 curveball. Didn't land it, but I like the selection and I like him pushing himself. Right there, a 2 1 curveball. Like the selection. Like that he's pushing himself and not just defaulting to the fastball. If you want to learn to throw a 3 2 curveball in the World Series, this is a really good time to throw a 3 2 curveball. Why is that? It's just an emotional hurdle. It's an emotional hurdle no matter where you're going to do it. And if it's a pitch you're developing still, change the grip, coming along really well, not a bad idea to put a little pressure on it. Well, with a fastball, that'll work too. Bullseye, a complete a one, two, three, seven for Caleb Ferguson. We stretch at Dodger Stadium. The offense try to get things going, try to come from behind and get the sweep. Career outing going, and just his seventh big league start. I mentioned the 83 pitchers. The season high is 102. That came his last start. A couple changes behind him. Teoscar Hernandez stays in the game after pinch hitting and plays center field. Randall Gritchick moves from center to right. And Billy McKinney is out. Part of the lineup for the Dodgers. Bellinger, Seeger, and Hernandez coming up. Dodgers without a base runner since A.J. Pollock's third inning walk. Only hit tonight. Kenta Maeda is single in the third as well. And I mean that hit barely made its way through the infield. Jacob Wagaspeck is that close to no hitting the Los Angeles Dodgers through six. And there have been a lot of swings as advertised where it's like and you know the hitters are thinking the same thing. How did I miss that. The speed he's throwing and what they are feeling are completely different. What they perceiving is what the ball will do and what it ends up doing has been different too. Rolled to second Biggio to get Bellinger. Shortstop. 
Corey Seager. So now Seager with one gone. The Dodgers wrap up this series tonight, get ready for the Yankees tomorrow. The Yankees are on the verge of getting swept by the Oakland A's and losing four straight for the first time this year. It's 5 2 in the eighth inning in Oakland. Ball on a strike. He's not getting many swings and misses, but he's getting a lot of balls off the barrel, off the end of the bat. The guys are just not picking him up. It's not like the location has been exceptional. It's not like the velocity is off the charts. It's not like the movement is like super late. It's just there's something going on as far as the deception. Funky. Yeah. Weak fly ball to center field. Routine for Hernandez. Two up, two down. It's what is known as a comfortable collar. And the collar being an 0 for, 0 for 3, 0 for 4. So you take that circle and you put it around your neck and it's a collar. But it's comfortable because you're seeing the ball. But you're just not squaring it up. Hernandez, one of the three base runners the Dodgers have had against Waggis back when he was hit by an 0-2 pitch. Bobblehead now. Had to be meetings about what pants to put on him, huh? I would think so. I would think Kike would have to clear that. Pummeled foul. Let's go to Alana. I have intel on the pants. I asked Kike earlier today. I said, so are these your yoga pants? He said, no, they're not tight enough to be yoga pants. I said, what do you think about this second bobblehead of your career? He said, actually, I wish it was when I was pitching on the mound. I wanted more of the pitcher's pants, the pitcher's stance. He said it is pretty cool, though, to have his second one. But apparently the pants aren't tight enough. He does have the high socks, but they're missing the palm trees, apparently. It's in the details. 0-2. Leaves it up, ball one. Always wanted to grow up, get to be a big leaguer, have a bobblehead, and complain about my pants. On the bobblehead? Yeah. <laughs> All tongue in cheek, including Kike. Nice job fighting that one off. One little four seamer that he throws up and into righties. We've seen it chase a few, get hit, Kika get hit. It's a really nice differential between the straight fastball four seamer and the cutter that he throws that goes the other way. So we've got a, a good 22 inches or so to cover with this guy, depending on which way he makes the ball go. Home with another one to Hernandez. Taps it foul and it stays one ball, two strikes. Ninety four pitches, depending on when this inning ends, could be an interesting decision for Charlie Montoyo. His spot leads off the eighth. This team's about the future, so I would not push the youngster. Yeah. But boy, he needs a little bit of a positive vibe in that clubhouse just to finish off the season, keep everybody on the same page.
He went around and the inning is over. Jacob Wagespat, game of his life at Dodger Stadium, threw a seven shutout innings. Blue Jays have a 2 0 lead. Despite that outing in the one in Colorado, look at the earned run average, 164. And the opposition, finally, somebody's name I can pronounce. James Paxton going for the New York Yankees, a 9 and 6 record with a 453 earned run average. It's going to be a big series and a fun weekend on Players Weekend, guys. Can't wait. 2 0 game to the eighth inning. Caleb Ferguson goes out there, throws his warm up pitches, and now Dave Roberts will come take the ball from him. They had to check to see who the pinch hitter would be, and if it gets announced, and then Caleb would have faced maybe the pitcher. But they're going with Emi Garcia since it looked like Drury was announced to come up. All right, so Garcia will come on and toss his warm up pitches. 2 0 game, eighth inning, and a far seven shutout innings, and he gives up just a single to Kenta Maeda. Wasn't a season high in pitch count, but I'll tell you, when you throw that many pitches against the Los Angeles Dodgers, give up one hit, you have been stressed and you have done well. Brandon Jury is the pinch hitter that was announced by Charlie Montoyo, and that is why Dave Roberts goes to Yimi Garcia. You see the fastball and the slider from Yimi. He's just looking for consistency and execution to the corners. Strike one. Well placed, oh and two. Three breaking balls. Got him to chase one, got one well placed, and that one was a little sweeper, changing the shape of them. A fourth one coming. And it gets him looking. One gone in the eighth. Would be considered a backup slider. You see it just kind of corkscrews right there. It's got all the spin of a slider, but doesn't break. Put that in a wine bottle and the cork will come out. Mm. Just, just a topic that I'm kind of familiar with. <sighs> I know. Okay. Top of the order, Bo Bichette, ball one. Looks like for the eighth inning it'll be Jason Adam who was impressive last night. He has some funk also in his delivery. Was it like a catcher? He doesn't really hide it like Wagaspak. Kind of shows it to you the whole time. He could be walking down the hallway carrying books and you would go that's an athlete. He's got everything about him that says athlete. Two and two. Well, since hitting the two home runs against Clayton Kershaw. He's gone one for seven. One for eight, actually. He's done damage on strikes, meatballs, but he 
has had a tendency to chase and I think that's the way to get him out here until he shows more discipline. Boy Amy looks good. Pat Hoberg showing a lot of discipline the home plate umpire. This is pretty demonstrative from Bo Bichette. Hmm. You don't usually get that much of a conversation with that demonstration of emotion. Especially when you've been in the big leagues for three weeks. Yeah. On the corner for a strike to Biggio. Just another level of must watch TV. <laughs> Oh, and two. Only corners for Emi. Edges and corners. The one two taken low and it's two and two on Biggio for the Dodgers in the bottom of the eighth inning bottom third of the order coming up they will get the top of the order up there again tonight before it's all said and done. Yimi Garcia strikes out the side. Yeah, maybe looking for their 12th walk-off win of the season. Here's Jason Adam, who pitched a scoreless ninth inning last night. Six games, you see the ERA, so on a roll and having early success. When you watch this delivery, you're going to see almost like a coach throwing batting practice. There's not going to be a screen in front of him, but, boy, he just takes his arm out of his glove, kind of shows you the whole way, takes it up by his ear and brings it at you. Peterson Martin and the pitcher spot coming up for the Dodgers only hit in this game if you happen to just be joining us Kenta Maeda a single back in the third inning Waggis back retired the final 14 that he faced. Ball on a strike on Jock. It is worth mentioning at this point the Blue Jays are without their closer tonight. Ken Giles placed on the paternity list prior to the game. An already depleted bullpen with the work they've had to do the last two days. Midwagas back start that much more important, but it also makes the end of this game that much scarier. Montoyo and the Blue Jays. On a two one from Adam Peterson with a wicked swing and a miss two and two. Jock had to stay down with this one. A little bit of a collapse. He was trying to lift that ball. Takes a very high full count. Jock pretty much a true outcome hitter. Very much so. Looking for two out of three right here. Walker the home run.
on a payoff pitch. He produces the third of those three. Out comes. Striking out to lead off the eighth. Strength against strength. Jason Adams wins the battle. Beatty in the on-deck circle. That's the pitcher's spot. Martin trying to set the table for him, make him represent the tying run. You know, two nothing game. It's foul and strike one. Casey Sadler is warming in the Dodger bullpen for the top of the ninth. Russ 0 for 2 today. 0 for his last 15. Two balls, one strike. Martin gets a piece of stay alive. Another 2-2 two -two is in the dirt and another full count. He's gone full to each of the first two hitters in this inning. He's able to get Peterson and gets ready for this 3-2 to Russell Martin. That is a diving stop by Vlad Jr. And two gone in the eighth. First step quickness and being real nimble down there with some soft hands. Beatty announced as the pinch hitter and time now for upward clutch off the bench. Beatty has been just that. 412 as pinch hitter this season. After his second call ups his first extended call up in the majors this year when they were sending him back down to triple A. Took the news in stride and asked Andrew Friedman and Dave Roberts do you guys mind if on my off days in triple A if I pinch hit to work on that skill. And so he continued to while he was down there in the rare off day. Dave Roberts and Andrew Friedman were like oh, this is awesome. What a way for a guy to respond to finding out that he's getting sent down. Can I pinch hit on my off days? Two and oh. It's a lot better than responses I've heard in the past. Like, can I take three days to get there? I've got some things I need to take care of. Um, yeah, take even more than three if you want. <laughs> Beatty rips it foul. And it's two and one. You know, we talk about the endless hours that these guys put in the cage and refining their swings. A lot of the work comes into making the swing more compact. You know, it's really easy to swing big. 
You, know, you just cock it really big. You feel like real powerful on your back leg, and you take this big long swing going forward. But you watch guys like Will Smith and Beatty and others. It's hard work to make it short and compact and still powerful. It is not your natural inclination. He's ahead here three and one. Three ball counts on all three hitters that have come up in this inning. Adam able to strike out Peterson get some help from Guerrero on a line drive from Martin. This though is three and one on Beatty. Here it comes. Ball four. So they get the time run to the plate here in the eighth. You got some hope in this inning. You think about Russell Martin in the line drive that could have easily fell in and then Beatty grinding out of the walk. Taking nothing for granted here. Montoya going to go to the old San Francisco giant Derek Law. Tying run coming up in the form of AJ. Derek Law on the pitch. And A.J. Pollock coming up representing the tying run. Robert Venskoyak and Brant Brown give A.J. a quick update on Derek Law. He's seen him awful lot, but you want to know what he's doing lately and what he has been successful with. So Beatty's pinch hit walk first base runner for the Dodgers since the third and Pollock pops the first pitch up that law throws into center field for Hernandez sending this game to the ninth. For run in his first game as a Dodger in mid July but since then he's pitched in eight games and not given anything up. He's been absolutely fantastic great movement great location and a lot of poise it's been a very nice pickup back up here because Dylan Floral went down on the I.L. Defensive changes behind him Beatty stays in and plays left. Jack Peterson flips over to right and Cody Bellinger to center so this is a double switch. And the pitcher spot now. First in the order. Vlad Guerrero Jr. leads off this ninth inning and on StatCast AI powered by AWS. We look back at his sixth inning home run. Breaking ball from Kenta Maeda that he reached out and pulled to the left center. He got most of it and it was enough. His 15th. He came up with so much buzz around him. Chops first one that he sees by Turner. Leadoff man aboard here in the ninth. He will hang on. So much buzz around him. Not a great start, but over the last month, he's hitting above 370. That is rule to base hit. Get off to the side, get an angle on it. You say, well, why don't you block it? Well, you can't block that and throw somebody out. You've got to be able to get that in the glove and get it to first. Telez comes up on to the sixth hit combined tonight. Five of them from Toronto. Strike one. For the Dodgers in the bottom of the ninth inning it'll be Muncy Turner and Bellinger. Making it extra important that Casey Sadler can keep it right here. Tremendous movement on his two seamer. He has really shown the ability since putting the Dodger uniform on to locate the both sides of the plate.
Ground ball to Turner is playing around the second baseman. It's five at four, six, three, double play. Gets him to roll over on a slider. Justin Turner with the nice move right there, opposite of what he would feel at third base, moving towards the bag. They're having to do a reverse pivot to get it to second. Smoothly done. Harkin him back to his days playing second base. Really sharp. Two gone in the ninth inning. Here's Grichik. It comes back for strike one. This two seamer is like a left handed slider. Got that much movement on it. Got a chase there, one and two. Sweet breaking ball. That, if that's a two seamer with the visual, you're going to think that's going to leak right down the middle. Then all of a sudden it drops off the table. And then a fastball to the top of the zone to get him swinging. Casey Sandler storms off after facing the minimum. Fasten those seat belts to the bottom of the ninth. We go. It's another magical finish at Dodger Stadium. He can't do him himself, but he can be the setup man right here for the offense. Either get him a tally or get on and bring the tying run to the plate. Max tonight 0 for 3. First one from Derek Laws. Down and in, ball one. The Dodgers have one hit. Belongs to Kenta Maeda. Four base runners total. In addition to that, two walks and a hit batsman. It's Law trying to close it out with their normal closer, Ken Giles. On paternity leave. They play two balls, no strikes on Muncie. Three balls and no strikes. Strike one. Law has eight career saves, three of them this season. His first in Toronto. His 3 1 pitch. Outside and a leadoff walk for Max Muncy. They feel it in the dugout. They feel it throughout this ballpark. This team has really entertained this audience at home. And they have had some very special finishes. Turner hitless in three tries tonight. How about these numbers against Derek Law? Law in a Giants uniform. Turner four for four, two doubles and a triple. Top of the zone with a fastball. Would you believe that in 11 walk-off wins this season, Turner has not had one. Obviously can't hit a walk-off here. But can take him a step closer. Law to Turner with the 0 2. Justin slashes the line with a right that hangs up for Gritchick in the first out of the ninth. It's the second one of those tonight that Justin has hit, where he hasn't even been able to release the bat. Hits it so hard right at somebody they know it's going to be caught. Buckle up here. You may see some big swings. 
He will not need to go to the chiropractor after a few of these swings. He will loosen up himself. Ball one. Two hits in game one. 0 for 7 the last two nights. The 1 0 pitch. Down the line. That is a third ball. Bellinger headed for second. Here comes Gritchick's throw. Not in time. And the time run is in scoring position on a Cody Bellinger double. Took a breaking ball down and then got on top of the fastball. No, it's a changeup, a high changeup. They were going low and away, left it up, and Cody made him pay. Fantastic timing on a changeup away to not pull that ball foul. First hit for the Dodgers since Maeda's third inning single. Corey Seager to the plate representing the winning run. We talked about this earlier tonight. The all-time record for walk-off home runs in a season is nine. The Dodgers have seven after Muncie last night. And they, like you at home and like the packed house around them, anticipating more. Corey Seager's been hitting it harder and harder lately. That is down the line and the game is tied. Seager's headed for second. It's 2-2 and the winning run is in scoring position. Can you have any more fun than this? Corey Seager, notorious first pitch fastball hitter. Well, he picks on this one right here and puts it almost where Bellinger did. A little tighter play at second base to get into scoring position, but he's thinking too right out of the box. These fans can't believe it. Are we seeing it again? Two run double for Seager. And on his bobblehead night, Hernandez up there with a chance to win it. Ball one. Whole family here from Puerto Rico. On a 1 0 pitch from Law. Hernandez swings and misses 1 and 1. Some outfield grass 
Seager finds third base, and then at the end, he finds home. The Lexus play of the game. A dozen walk-off wins. What a summer.